and good morning. So in this bonus session, I want to I ask you all, what did you want me to cover? What extra tips can I share with you as new bloggers or existing bloggers? And um, yes, yeah, so today we decided to, you guys voted to talk about how to make money as a blogger. So how to monetize your blog. Um, thank you for joining. If you're watching this live, uh, you can leave comment below or ask me any questions and I will answer them at the end of this uh, live video. Um, if you are watching this as a replay, uh, you can still send me questions and I'll reply them uh, afterwards. So let's get started. So in order to start earning any money as a, as a blogger, you need to make sure that you choose a profitable blogging niche or a niche market. So this is important because you want people to read your blog. So you don't want to write just about things you're passionate about. So if you're just writing about things that are your hobby or things that you enjoy doing, but nobody else is interested to read, then you are just wasting your time. So I believe someone asked me this question in the previous live session. Um, I want to write about things that I'm passionate about and how can I monetize that? So in order to monetize your skill, your passion, your uh, knowledge, you need to find a good niche. So what is a good niche in blogging? So same when it comes to social media or any business, you need to treat your blog as, um, as a marketing tool. So for that, you need to find a good niche. So there are certain qualities that a good uh, target market for your blog should have. So first of all, you need to have e-commerce activity. So are there, can you sell things in that industry? Okay, let's look at the social media marketing industry, which is my niche. Can, are there other businesses selling stuff to this audience? So yes, when you're talking about social media marketing, there are marketing apps, there are platforms, there's Instagram, there's social media scheduling tools, there's uh, people selling courses on social media marketing, there's people offering services. So there's a lot of transactions going on and it means that it's a profitable niche. The second thing you need to look at when you choose your blogging niche is, is there a decent search volume? Are people actually searching for problems? Is there um enough google search traffic that people are looking into this so if it's something that it's not trending at the moment and nobody's interesting you're trying to find the niche that used to be good in the past <laughs> like uh i don't know uh analog watches and you know stuff that the technology has already evolved and nobody is interested about it you know new technology has come in and it's replaced it things are not relevant no enough searches, that's not going to make for a profitable blog. The third thing is passion or problem. So again, are people facing a lot of problems in your niche? For example, in social media marketing niche, there are a lot of people that don't know where to start. They don't know which platform to choose. Uh, they have difficulty in measuring the return on investment on social media. So that's when other analytics app comes in and social media marketers come in and consultants come in. So there's a lot of uh, blogs that can help to solve a problem in this niche. The fourth thing that you need to look at when you choose a niche is high social media activity. This is very important nowadays because blogs are not standalone marketing tools. Usually you need to promote your blog to your social media, your blogs, if they are good, they can get reshared by other users. And that is what you're supposed to do. And that should be your goal to market your blog, to get more readers to your, visit your website. And so you can sell stuff and you can make money out of your blog because if your industry doesn't do well on social media. There are not enough influencers. There are not enough people spreading the news. The keywords are not trending. It's not a profitable niche. The fifth uh, item that you need to look at is pre-existing knowledge. Pre-existing knowledge, this can mean uh, websites, um, books written, or any other like news articles that come in your niche. So 
For example, in social media marketing, there are tons of books being published. There, there's a ton of research. There's a lot of uh, data that you can use to write your blogs. Because when you write a blog, you're not writing something from scratch. You're not doing a PhD research. You're not doing your own surveys and you're gathering data and you're analyzing data and you're coming up with a new uh, invention. So no, your blogs are not going to be 100% original and that is fine because we're not bringing in new knowledge unless you're writing a research paper, a research thesis for academics. So that is different. But a business blog, usually you need to have uh, relevant materials that you can use, you can synthesize, you can summarize, and you can use that knowledge in your how to blog or in a how 10 steps blog in an X versus Y blog post. So you need to use good material and good knowledge. So if people have researched it in the past, then uh, that's a good sign that it's a profitable niche. You can use that knowledge. You can use those newspaper articles to guide you in writing blogs. And the last um, feature of a profitable blog niche is you need to have an existing competition. So why is this important? You may think like, oh my God, if there are so many competitors, why should I come in? You know, what can I bring new to the table? But if I look in, I do a research and I see no competitors uh, are writing about a similar niche as my blog, let's say Instagram marketing. When I started to focus on this niche, I found that there are plenty of other people, there are plenty of blogs that write about this. So I'm not the only one. And that is a good sign because it means that people are interested in this. There's a real demand and we can actually grow, take advantage of this existing market condition and this existing niche. So your competition is always good when it comes to blogging because you can approach your competitors, you can write them a letter or an email or a <laughs> Instagram DM and you can tell them that, hi, I love your blog. I would like to um, add your link into my future blog post. I love it so much. And you can actually share links with each other and help to grow this industry together. So don't look at, at your competitors as someone you need to hate or someone that it's stealing money from you or your chance to monetize it. There's definitely ways to monetize even though you have a lot of competition. So a typical um, sales funnel for your blog post, it's going to be something like this. So first you identify your niche market. So once you have chosen a good and profitable niche, let's say like Instagram marketing or social media marketing or whichever niche you came, uh, travel marketing, then you need to start to build website traffic. So you're not going to be able to monetize it straight away. So the typical process of getting your website set up and blogs to generate traffic, it can take up to six months. So if you're starting from zero, it's going to take about six months of continuous posting, sharing one blog post a week for you to get consistent traffic. So that is always the goal. If you're not getting any traffic, it's going to be more difficult for you to monetize your blog. So what do you do once you have that traffic? You add them to a subscriber list. So you can add them to an email marketing list or whichever you ask them to fill up a form. So you need to capture those leads and everyone who visits your website. So you're taking the traffic and you're converting it into subscribers. And then to these subscribers who are now your warm leads, they are they know your brand, they are interested, they've already downloaded something for free. So to these people, you can start to sell. This is where your sales should start. Now, how to monetize your blog or what are the ways that someone new, someone who's just starting with blog marketing can make money. Now, I'm going to show you in this next section five different ways that you can make money blogging. Um, but before we go there, you need to uh, plan your sales funnel in advance. So you need to understand that there are two scenarios when you can make money as a blogger. So on the left, you can see the first scenario is when you're just starting. You have low traffic, so your best way to make money is to sell expensive products or high-priced items. 
or services. And then as you grow to a high traffic stage, which can happen after six months or after one year, then you will naturally be able to decrease your price and sell low price item to this high traffic, um, high traffic audience. So just to keep that in mind that um, when you're a beginner in blogging, the strategies and the tactics that will work for you are different than when you already have a monthly subscribers and um, engaged community. So if you are just starting, don't be scared to charge high prices. That doesn't mean that uh, you're, nobody's going to buy from you or that you're not worth it. The first thing you can do and I advise you to do if you're starting a new blog, you can do this from the scratch. You don't even need a blog actually, but even before you start, you can sell consulting services. So these are your high priced items. So within the first month up to the first three months, when you have less than 1000 site visitors, uh, monthly site visitors, you can promote your one-on-one -on -one coaching, your group programs, your high end consulting. So here you need to, a position yourself as an expert. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have, how many visitors you have, you are an expert. So you need to uh, choose your expertise widely. That's why you need to find a good niche. So once you found a good niche, a niche that you are expert in, you can position yourself to sell high-end services. So these are going to be marketed mostly to your social media. So you're going to get people to your blog just to sign up or use it as a, a website platform. So here you don't even need to start writing consistent blogs to market your consulting services. So eventually as your traffic builds up, you can start creating and selling digital products. So we are starting again from high priced items and we are lowering down the price as the um, traffic increases. So now we are at month three, three to six months in, we have about 1000 followers already. We hopefully have reached 1000 uh, visitors, sorry, monthly visitors. So we can start creating eBooks. So once you have already developed a consulting program or you already have like one or two clients, you have worked with them, you found out what are their problems, you can summarize uh, problems and give them a short solution. So you can give them an ebook that helps them some to solve a problem. You can give them uh, sell PDF guides, you can sell your templates, you can sell even courses. So once they're three to six months in, you have a bit of consulting experience, you have worked with clients one-on-one, now you can start to sell them uh, medium priced items like courses, PDF guides, or your own ebooks. So digital products are some of my favorite products to sell because um, I feel that a lot of people can sign up and it can reach a wide majority of audience. So you can also uh, give some of these for free um, in, in turn of new visitors signing up for your mail list where you can um, sell them more expensive courses. So this, as we go further on six to 12 months, you can start to do sponsored posts. Now this is optional. Um, this is, some, is something that has worked for me personally and I don't see many people talking about this. <laughs> um, so if you have a good niche, again, it's so important to find the right niche, a profitable niche. So for me, I started to write about uh, Instagram marketing tools. I did some reviews of the best social media um, scheduling platforms. I did reviews about um, social media analytics platforms. So everything it's on my blog, it's all about um, social media tools, apps and uh, sharing tips and guides on how to improve social media marketing. So what has happened recently is um, when new apps come in and the new businesses want to enter this market, they somehow read my post and they saw that I compared, uh, let's say, preview with later app, which are two different so, uh, social media uh, scheduling tools. So they saw my review and they emailed me and they said, hey, I want to you to mention my app in your uh, blog post. I want to pay you this much. Or somebody come and tell me I'm launching a new app. Uh, 
can you do a review of my app? You know, I will pay you. So these are sponsored posts. You can also uh, pitch them, go to brands that you want to mention on your website and you can tell them, look, I already have 5,000 monthly site visitors or I have uh, 1,000 site monthly site visitors. They are in this niche. They are all, you know, um, looking for to learn about new tools and new apps. And I think that, you know, your app or your service or your website will benefit from being featured to my audience. So you can propose to charge them a fee. Now, how much you charge this will vary, obviously, based on the industry you're in, which country you are in. Um, and yeah, how much is the, how big is the company that you want to sponsor? So, and also how many visitors you have on your, on your site. So for smaller sites, uh, I think if you're a beginner, you can start charging like $50 up to 150. That's what I started to charge last year. So once you get to a more advanced level and you have much more traffic, uh, I know people who charge above $500 just to do a sponsor post and to put include a link and mention a brand. So this is, I think, something that um, something unique that I personally didn't expect, but it's a way that you can make money. So if you're smart about this, you choose the right niche, you know which brands are there, you go and pitch to them. Look, I've been a blogger for six months or 12 months. I have this much traffic and I can help to put your brand in, in my website. So you can definitely consider this strategy now the fourth strategy remember we are going to show you five strategies and uh some mistakes that you should avoid at the end so the fourth strategy is of course this one is very popular google adsense so i've received a lot of questions about how soon can you monetize with google adsense how much money can you make and honestly um i don't think it's the best monetizing strategy because um you need to have a lot of traffic in order to make any money. So basically how Google AdSense works is if you start your website and then you sign up for your AdSense account, you link it to your blog post, and then uh, Google will display ads to your blog whenever a visitor clicks on them you will get a percentage from that ad cost. Now this again varies from <laughs> a few cents to up to thousands of dollars, depending on which country you're located in. So I'm sorry to say, but like in countries like in Asia here, we don't get much um, money from AdSense because ads are much cheaper than what you get in US. So for example, based on my research, if you have about 1000 visits a month, you can make between 50 cent and $50. So if you're in Asia, you'll make 50 cents. If you're in US, you'll make $50. So it really depends on which location you're in and what is your blog niche. So are companies willing to pay a lot to advertise? Like let's say if you're in the car, sports car blogger, um, you may get a lot more um, money because the car products are more expensive. So they are selling it more, the ads are more expensive as well. But if you choose um, a niche like mine, like Instagram marketing, um, Instagram marketing apps or other services, they are charging subscription fee, which is not a lot. Like let's say for example, Canva is charging like what, $12 a month. So the ads, they, they are, the amount of money they're paying on ads and how much they, they earn, it's not going to be that much for, for me to earn from AdSense. So I do not um, personally use this one right now, but you can definitely explore. You can get started when you have 1000 visitors. So, but I advise you to start when you have 5,000 because the, the earning is not going to be much. Now, the last strategy of how you can monetize your blog is through affiliate marketing. Now, this again, it's not for everyone. And I've listed it last because I feel that again, you need to have a lot of traffic on your blog post before you can make any real money with this affiliate marketing. Now, the most popular is um, Amazon, but I'm sure that in Asia, there are other, um, there are many brands that also offer affiliate marketing opportunities so you can um, basically recommend products of other companies 
on your blog, you can write reviews, you can do a list of top 10, let's say, um, Instagram marketing apps or whatever. So you can basically get a commission from how many people choose to click on your link and buy on your affiliate link. Um, the only problem with this is that sometimes we have, we are multi-passionate individuals. So like for me, I like coffee. I like, <laughs> I like marketing. Yes. But I have other hobbies. Like I search for cat products. Like I'm, I own a cat. So there's a lot of things that make me who I am. So if I'm only going to promote, if I'm going to promote all these various things on my website, it's going to be my audience won't like it, so they will not click, they will not follow me. So you need to make sure that whatever prod affiliate marketing products you sign up for, they're relevant to your niche and you don't want your readers or your customers to get angry at you for promoting the wrong, um, the wrong products. Like for example, I was watching a YouTuber, um, YouTuber last week and they, it's like, it's totally not relevant. Like they are a makeup channel and then the products they promote is actually men underwear. So it's like very <laughs> like weird. <laughs> Why would, it's not tailored to the audience, what I'm trying to say. So make sure you are only choosing affiliate products that are related to your industry or to your niche. And now after we've gone through a brief summary of the top five strategies for monetizing your account. I just want to end it on a note that I just want to share more tips. So here are some mistakes to avoid that will help you make even more money as a blogger. So firstly, not doing monthly guest posts. Guest posts are very important. So a guest post is when you write content for someone else's website and you get another party or another writer, another collaborator to write blog posts for your own. So this is very important because especially if you're a new blogger, you're not going to search uh, rank high on Google. It's going to be very difficult for Google to pick up your content. So before you hit those like six months or seven months or whatever it takes for your content to start ranking organically, you need to do a lot of guest posts. So you need to have links to other blogs. You need other blogs to link to you so they can send traffic to you. So you can appear in front of more people. So don't just focus writing content for your own blog. You need to branch out, write for a few different blogs in your industry and get other people to write for you if possible. You can also hire someone if you can afford to pay. It's really good strategy. Uh, hire different influencers or ask them to write a free post and a free post for you so they can drive traffic back to their website. It depends whatever arrangement you want to make with them. But you, I think it's a mistake if you're not hopping on the guest post trend. So the second mistake that you're making as a new blogger is selling something your audience doesn't want. I've already mentioned this in the earlier slides. So make sure you only sell things custom to your audience's problem. Otherwise they're going to leave. They're not going to buy. You're going to waste your time. The third mistake is putting all your eggs into one basket. I know I'm talking about blog business blogs and growing a business blog and selling on a blog, but a blog doesn't, it's not a standalone marketing tool. You still need to integrate it with other social media platforms. You need to be where your audience is. So your blog is your sales platform. It's your um, nurturing platform. It's where people come to gain knowledge and it's where you capture the leads, you put them into a sign up form. But it doesn't mean that you need to rely on Google traffic to recommend your website. So try to share your post on all social media, every single channel opportunity you have to do. So you have to share because you don't want to rely only on Google. Um, and the last mistake is not selling early enough. So a lot of people are waiting. Oh, I'm going to wait for a few months to get more traffic so I can earn from AdSense. Google AdSense, it's not the only opportunity you can make money as a blogger in 2020. So all the five strategies that I mentioned in this blog, some of them are better 
you can start right away, like with consulting, digital products, you can start making money right away. So don't waste time. Just put it out there and start monetizing it early. And this is uh, all my slides for today. So I hope uh, this session, you find it valuable. You have learned a lot more and I've helped to answer some of your questions about what are some ways that you can make money as a new blogger in 2020 and beyond. So thank you so much for watching. Please list down any questions that you have below. I'll come back and answer them uh, after this live session. So have a nice day.